Hi, my name is Don Leach. I'm a master's student at After Cape Town, which is a film school in South Africa, for those of you not familiar. And this is a video that is a behind the scenes workflow for the documentary Crumbs Toppling the Bread Cartel. In this video, I want to talk about both the creative and the technical workflow and the kind of techniques we used, such as working with transcripts and working with paper edits, using Avid Media Composer and Script Sync, and basically how you can take a whole lot of interviews, a vast amount of footage and work with that in an efficient and creative way, and how you can create a story in post-production. So first of all, just a little bit about the documentary. It's called Crumbs, Toppling the Bread Cartel. It follows the story of Imram Mukadam, who was a bread salesman and a political activist. He uncovered collusion and price fixing within the South African bread market and blew the whistle. And then, of course, the giant bread corporations came down on him like a ton of bricks, and he found himself in all sorts of legal trouble and financial problems. And it's basically a story of our David and Goliath fighting the system, crusading for social justice. Okay, so the way we approached this was when we heard about Imran, we spoke to him and we interviewed him and we interviewed other people about the whole process. With a documentary, you just really have to go out there and start shooting before you really know how it's going to shape up in the end. And that creates quite a few challenges as an editor. It's very different to working with a script where you have some kind of structure in mind. So first of all, I want to talk a little bit about Dropbox. Dropbox is a program you can download for free and it just kind of shows up on your computer. And the way that Dropbox works is you have a shared folder. So we have our shared folder here with my whole crew. There we've split it up into control, medium and narrative. And you'll understand what these words are if you've ever studied after. It's a bit of after speak there. So if we go into narrative, we can see the directors and the people who did all the interviewing. They have their own interview questions. It's a really good idea to get some interview questions worked out beforehand. You're more likely to get the kind of content you can use if you've researched beforehand. If you're a producer, don't forget to have your release forms to make sure that no one will see you after you get them on camera and make sure you get everyone to sign that and get all your paperwork in order before you screen it anywhere. So we had quite a lot of footage. I believe it's over 60 hours of footage, many, many, many interviews. Uh, the majority of it was on 5D and 7D. There was also a lot that we used on a Panasonic AVC HD, which we primarily used when the 5D and 7D There's weren't available. We even shot some stuff through Skype, but mostly it was on 5D and 7D. You can see here I've dumped it and categorized it according to the date that it was shot. More importantly, you've got to keep it categorized in your A and your B camera. This is when we're shooting multicam for interviews. And then within the A and B camera according to date, I also categorized it according to the number of the card that was shot in chronological order. So for example, A1, this is a folder structure for the 5D. Here we can see the first person we interviewed was Paul Hoffman. And here we have our H264 that the 5D shoots on natively. So because I'm using Avid, this wasn't ideal. So of course that was all transcoded to DNxHD and we didn't have to do an online offline workflow. We just stuck with that the whole way through. So I want to go through the process of how we got it to a stage where we could actually construct a story around it. And I'll begin with Nyembezi, it's a good example of one interview we did. So first of all, all this was transcoded, DNxHD 120, 1080p. You can also see I've made use of the tape ID column. This is really just for my own purposes, it's not really a metadata that's being used in any kind of automated fashion. But most importantly, it was to keep track of the camera number, camera A or camera B. So here's my A camera, that's my wide, and my close-up, which is the roving camera, which moved around a little more and wasn't entirely always stable. But what's great about doing it in this way is that you always have the option to cut between them, which makes editing it a lot easier. So 
So the first step is we want to get our A camera and B camera synced together in some kind of multi-group so we can seamlessly cut between our two angles. Best way to do this is to use Pluralize. Pluralize is a program you can download from the internet. It does cost some money, but you can get a, I think a 15 day trial. The way you need to work with Pluralize is you need to set up a sequence first. So I'm going to take my A camera and just throw that into the sequence. You can see I've marked in purple the stuff that's actually interview, so I know only to use that. Now I have this all in the sequence, that's fine. But next, what I want to do is bring in my B camera, but not on the same track. I've patched V1 to V2 and A1 to A3 and A2 to A4, so it's going to come up on a separate track. Now I just select my B cam footage and drag it onto the sequence. It'll go where the playhead is, no problem. Now there's one last thing that I'll need to sync, and that is of course from my audio, which was recorded separately on a Niagara. So I'm going to select both of those and patch my audio to A5, the final one. Turn off V2 so it doesn't overwrite and drag that down like that. There we go. What you do is you export an AAF, just check your options that we have it all correct. An AAF, I want to include all video and data tracks and all audio tracks, but the most important thing to look at is that you link to, you don't export media, because Pluralize can just look at the original media in your media drive. And that's good. Save and I'll just pop that on the desktop. That's fine. Once it's returned from Pluralize, we can see that it's all been completely synced up. Now we have this in a sequence, but we want it into one multi group clip that'll make it easier to work with. Unfortunately, the 5D doesn't record continuously for over 10 minutes in the version we were using, so the cameras had to stop and start, and even the audio stopped and start at one point for some reason. So this becomes quite a challenge to put it all together into one coherent clip. If we only had one, for example, if we were only using these three, it would be a lot easier to put it together. Now, unfortunately, there isn't really an easy and efficient way to do this in Avid that I'm aware of. However, there is a fantastic article called How to Make Bulletproof Avid Multigroups, posted by Tim. And you can check this out on View from the Cutting Room Floor. Tim goes through the whole process. He points out how you can use your own keyboard shortcuts by making the whole process very simple and automated. Once you have this all set up, all you'll have to do is press 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I'll leave you to figure this out on your own, but the point is that once we're done, we end up with a multi-group, which includes the entire sequence, all of the shots of the interviews we did that day. Press F2 to go to multi-camera mode. 